So um, when you've been inside an intense lab, it's quite easy to assume a lot of stuff that people kind of know what you've been doing. So maybe I'll just say two sentences about what's happened the last week. Um, and you can obviously grab us and, and ask more questions. But we decided to work with the dinner date as a situation between two players or two audiences. We met tag over three or four times over Skype. And out of the dinner date provocation, we made a small prototype. We showed them as soon as they arrived on, on Sunday. And the rest of the week has been us guiding the morning session, tag guiding the afternoon session. And what you see this afternoon are a number of prototypes that have come out of this week in this building. So when we're referring back to this week or to dinner date or to Wojciech as a potential influence or not, because some prototypes have not taken that on, have just taken the relationship of the dinner date, that's what we're referring to. Yeah, uh, <coughs> that's exactly it. So in, in this case, the dinner date is the provocation, uh, not just uh, for us to come together and, and make, to design and create together, but also this other layer, this meta layer, thinking about making and thinking about processes of making under the, the rubric of this notion of lab. So. Uh, without going into in, uh, more and more detail, because Lynn covered a lot of the kinds of things that we did, I thought I'd offer a, another kind of way to think about it. And so I'll try to be uh, also very quick, uh, but the provocation is simply this. Uh, what if uh, labs themselves could be considered gamey or games? Uh, what if we imagined uh, our lab as uh, having the properties that we sometimes understand the games we study, the games we make as having. What properties might transfer to the understanding, from the understanding of how games work, what games are, to how we run our labs. And it's just one way to think about uh, what a lab is and what it can be. So I have four provocations, postulations. The first one is games or labs as games. Uh, are shared objects. And this is something Lynn and I discovered early on. We didn't really realize it, but that word game is magic. Uh, we can say the word new media, interactive media, interactive art, and everybody has some idea of what that might mean or no idea at all. But when you say the word game, everybody has a sense of what it means. And you can bring immediately right together people from all kinds of disciplines, all walks of life, public, private, commercial, academic. If you say the word game, I have an idea what that means. So the game itself, a game, whatever it is, we don't even know what it is, but if I say that word, you have it in your head, which means we can come right together uh, and share. The object is graspable from our different perspectives. And all these, uh, as an object which allows for interdisciplinary collaboration, it's brilliant. We don't exactly know why it's brilliant, uh, but it's there. Uh, and having this object means we can say, oh, we have a game lab. And even without saying anything more, people who walk in the door say, oh, well, I know what you must do here. And so we look for the board games and the video games and the play, are we playing games all the time? Uh, again, a way of just bringing people in the door. And once they're in the door, they can sit at the table. Conversations can begin. But any lab, any kind of collaborative lab like that first needs the people in the door. <coughs> It's also shareable with publics. We can make anything and call it a game and we instantly have an audience whether they understand what that is or not. Just call, and you know, a lot of people know this already. They've, a lot of commercial enterprises know this already. If we just add the word game, we'll get more people out. But this is also true uh, in the arts. Um, to expose people to new experiences, game become the excuse, the way in. <laughs> Second point. Uh, Games as labs, labs as games, are distributed objects. There's a very important point about games as interactive media. Mm -hmm. That old model of production, production and consumption is broken in games. Uh, we say in game studies that uh, games are not meaningful unless they are played. So that model of making something, sending it out into the world, and having consumers buy it uh, doesn't apply in the context of games because the games only exist in as much as anybody plays them. That means the line that takes you from the lab, you know, the old model of the science lab where truth is produced in this secluded, isolated ivory tower and then shipped out to the world, it doesn't work for games. Uh, the walls break down. 
the, the object is distributed, the lab is distributed. <laughs> to make our games, we need to engage with publics, with all kinds of people who play them. And any, even the commercial game industry, which tries very hard to all uh, patent everything, keep everything secret, finally always understands that at the end of the day, their games are distributed. They have no life until they're played. <laughs> It's a chart of all the connections. In the end, we can't even describe what TAG is because we're filtered into so many different organizations and groups. And working always, uh, one of the advantages of being an academic institution is in a sense we're the kind of ultimate neutral ground for this distribution to take place. Uh, and so uh, whether you work in industry or in the arts, funding agencies or whatever, in our space, there's no denomination. You're welcome. Uh, and people are willing to come in part because there's no implied competition, no sense in which uh, uh, we have one agenda rather than another as long as we're keeping that distribution open. Third point, <coughs> labs as games are fuzzy objects. We, especially around the edges, they're not clear. Their boundaries, their definition is unclear. I mean, everybody knows anyway, play as a concept, games as a concept have very fuzzy boundaries. We use that to our advantage uh, and explore the edges of those fuzzy or the fuzziness of the object. So on one hand, we can grasp the object. On the other hand, that object that we're grasping is vague. It's fuzzy. We have a sense of it. And it's that vagueness that we are exploring. So TAG designed explicitly to, and this is what Lynn was alluding to, in the, the idea of playing with experimental games. <coughs> gestural games, interface games, games that are not games, what is a game, um, games that could be games, taking things that are not games. Uh, and finally, this intersection, which seems to have captured our imaginations, especially this week, in a way I never thought they would, um, theater and games. I mean, uh, anybody who comes from this domain, the theater domain, knows you already have theater games. There's already play and games all over. But what would it mean Right, to look and explore the intersection between game design, whether it's the artistic or commercial version, um, and the notion of game and play in the context of, of theater. <coughs> Finally, uh, labs as games are ways of, of world making. This is one of the important ones for me, working on a book on the subject. And I, I, I'm an academic, so I do quotes, but this one, still makes me cry. There's very little uh, in Huizenga that I use anymore, but this is the one to use. And for this exercise, all you need to do is put lab instead of child. In play, the lab is making an image of something different, something more beautiful or more sublime or more dangerous than what it usually is. When it's a prince or when it's a daddy or a wicked witch or a tiger, the lab is quite literally beside itself with delight, transported beyond itself to such an extent that it almost believes it is such and such a thing, without, however, wholly losing consciousness of ordinary reality. His, its representation is not so much a sham reality as a realization and appearance, imagination, in the original sense of the word. And of course, we can build these worlds, as games do very well, virtually. And we do that. But we also do it materially in the spaces that we create. And finally, My missing slide, socially, a group of people, 